Well, uh, it, it's kind of a difficult story to tell without going way back, and I don't want to give you way too much detail here, but uh, the Cattaraugus County Museum, the original museum, um, the building was over in Little Valley, was created as a memorial for Civil War veterans. And this was an idea that kind of came to the veterans at a local GAR um, reunion in 1907 in Salamanca. And um, they had the idea to you know, raise the money, build a building, and create a museum. And their civil or their, their service-related possessions would, would create the, the basis of the collections of the museum. And that's what they did. In 1914, September of 1914, they had the, the groundbreak here, the dedication uh, over in Little Valley. And they have a photograph here that shows the the dedication with all the veterans lined up in front of the old building. And um, therefore, um, the, the flag that's kind of the centerpiece of our current exhibit uh, was, was one of those items that was given to the museum to create its initial collections when it first started up. Or at least that's what we assume because there really, there was no curator position for, for decades after the, the museum was created. And um, record keeping was really limited to handwritten notes that were attached to uniforms and things like that. Uh, and where these tags don't exist or where they've disappeared over the last 100 and almost 10 years, um, we unfortunately sometimes don't know where these things came from. In the case of the flag, um, we assume that it was one of the original items donated to the museum in 1914. Um, we do know that it, it was on display at the old museum for decades, um, until the late 70s at least. Uh, the only information we really had about it was uh, two cards. There was a typed card that said 37th New York Infantry uh, battle flag captured at Chancellorsville. And then there was a little handwritten tag that was pinned to it um, that had uh, a name, W.S. Hubble, and uh, an address on Pearl Street. And that was basically it. Now, this flag, as I said, was on display at the old museum in Little Valley um, from presumably 1914 until the late 1970s, when uh, the curator at the time, Lorna Spencer, had noticed that uh, the condition of the flag was, was deteriorating. It was not displayed as it is right now, fully uh, laid out. It was actually folded up into about a 24 by 20 inch frame. So this was all folded up with only a portion of the flag visible. Uh, what Lorna did, she had noticed that it was kind of sagging down in the frame, and it, it is silk, and it's painted silk. The, um, the, the design on it is painted on, and um, it was becoming brittle and, and starting to kind of crack and fragment. So she took it out um, roughly 1980 or so, and she laid it out in the basement of the old museum building on a table, um, hoping to if she laid it flat to, to kind of ease the creases out of it from being folded for so long. And in the meantime, she was contacting some people. I know that she said there was someone in Buffalo that worked with textiles that she was hoping to be able to um, do something to, to preserve the flag. And a couple of years went by, flags on the table, and she just wasn't able to get the funding to really do anything with it. So um, to try to keep it from deteriorating further, she wrapped it in, in archival paper, acid-free paper, and um, put it in a box and, and put it away. And that's pretty much where the flag remained in the following 30 years. When I came here to the museum, this was about 19, 2007, and um, I haven't been there that long. Um, I came in in 2007, and, and over the past 15 years or so, um, I had, you know, occasionally gone, you know, through our collections and, and taken a look at the flag, um, but it had become so brittle, 
so fragile that I really didn't dare do anything with it. And it's one of those things that I kind of would look at um, and keep you know, thinking about you know, what we could do about it and then you know, put it back into storage. When COVID hit um, and the museum was for about three months closed to the public, uh, the historian Sharon Fellows and myself were, were looking for kind of busy work, I guess I should say. I mean, things to do, projects to keep us busy that, um, you know, we were, were furloughed, but we were working from home. And so we were kind of looking for things that we could do. And she had come up with the idea, well, maybe we can find a grant or something and, and do something with the flag. So I started looking into that. Uh, I contacted a textile conservator downstate near uh, New York City and I think it's New Salem or something like that and um, while we were working on a, a grant that we thought we were eligible for uh, I sent the flag to them because part of the grant process was we needed a treatment plan uh, from a textile conservator so I sent the flag down to them and they examined it and came up with this, this treatment plan Part of the, the, uh, the other aspect of the grant application was trying to find out whatever we could about the history, which as I said was difficult because we only had really just these two note cards. Um, we knew it was the 37th New York, which um, was actually largely a New York City regiment. It's known as the Irish Rifles. Uh, but there were two companies from Cattaraugus County, one from Ellicottville and one from Allegheny. And uh, so we knew that. We knew, based on just that note card, that it had been captured at the Battle of Chancellorsville. And, and if you look into the history of the 37th New York, uh, you'll see that the 37th essentially ceases to exist after Chancellorsville. 37th New York was present in a lot of the, the early battles in the war. Um, it was at Bull Run, was not engaged, it was kind of on the reserves. Uh, it was part of the uh, McClellan's Peninsular Campaign in 1862, so the 37th was there, um, Malvern Hill and, and, and several battles there. Uh, it was at Fredericksburg, um, the 37th and participated in, in the Mud March after Fredericksburg to Winter Camp, uh, and then they were at Chancellorsville. And um, after the Battle of Chancellorsville, they had lost roughly a third of their active strength from before the battle. And it was made up of uh, two-year enlistments and three-year enlistments. The two-year enlistments, which were a large portion of those soldiers that were still active after Chancellorsville, their, their enlistments ended June 1st. Now, actually, Chancellorsville is, is early May. So they were gonna be gone. Um, what they decided to do then was instead of trying to essentially recruit a, you know, for the regiment again, they, they mustered out the two-year enlistments and they transferred the three-year enlistments to other regiments, mostly the 40th New York, and then the 37th ceases to exist. So we know that, you know, from this tag that the, the flag was captured at Chancellorsville and not that much else. Um, Sharon, the historian, she's our, our research expert. She's the one that went into the deep dive trying to um, delve into the, the history of the flag while I was trying to deal with the grant and the uh, um, conservation efforts. Um, we got, we heard back from from the folks downstate with a treatment plan that was a three-phase plan that was going to be about $25,000 which um, was not really feasible. Um, we are you know, a, gov a government department, we're a municipality here, Cataraugus County actually runs the museum, um, and 25,000 is, is just is more than I would have been able to put together for that. Um, meanwhile, we discovered that because we're a municipality, we are, we're ineligible for the grant. Uh, something that the, the grant, the, the advisor I had been working with I had explained to her our situation, and she said, yeah, you're good, and then we were partway into the application process. She said, oh, you know, you're, 
your municipality, oh yeah, you can't apply for this. So we were kind of stuck with, you know, this is going to be a very expensive undertaking combined with the fact that we don't have grant money for it. Um, I had reached out, and this all actually was, was extremely serendipitous. I had reached out to the Art Conservation Department of Buff State, and um, I just sent them an email and said, we have this flag, is, is there anybody who's interested in taking this on as a project? And I heard back from the head of the department and she said, um, I don't think I've got anybody interested in textiles right now, but send me some pictures and, um, you know, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. So she sent me, or uh, very shortly afterwards, in a few days, I think, she actually called me back and she said, actually, I've got a student who is really interested in this as her senior project. Um, this was the Thursday before Labor Day weekend. So the thing is, uh, the, the semester's already started, so I need this now, as soon as possible. And the flag was still all the way down near New York City. Uh, so I, I called the folks up that had it. They, they didn't want to ship it, which I understood because they had managed to kind of lay it out. And it was, again, in a very fragile state. And so I arranged to drive down the next day and, and get the flag and bring it back up and take it up to, to Buff State. And so they started the process of um, really just rescuing it uh, because it was, um, and you know, if later if you want to focus it like on some of the pictures I've got up here, um, they, they show the condition, the before and the after. It, it really was in, in, in terrible shape. It was just large segments of it were just tiny pieces of, of fragments of silk. And so they began that process. And again, meanwhile, Sharon and I are, are looking into the history. And uh, the, the Rosetta Stone to the whole thing, Sharon managed to um, track down the W.S. Hubble that was on that little note card. Um, there was an address, it's uh, 379, okay, let's see, uh, 379 Pearl Street, yes, um, which First, I, you know, I assumed Buffalo, because I'm familiar with Buffalo, so I knew it was a Pearl Street, and, but I was having trouble tracking down a person, this W.S. Hubble. I, I found a different Hubble in Rochester from the early 1900s, um, and so I went down like a rabbit hole there, but it ended up being um, the wrong person. But Sharon managed to find out that this, this W.S. Hubble was William Stone Hubble, who was a Presbyterian minister, and he was minister of the North Presbyterian Church of Buffalo, which was on Main Street in Buffalo at that time. Um, and the uh, parsonage where he lived was at 379 Pearl Street. So that's this is our guy, we now knew that. Um, and the question is, how did he come by the flag and, and, and how did it get to Cattaraugus County, especially being a New York City regiment mostly? Well. Again, the Rosetta Stone, Sharon managed to track down by searching his name in um, some of her newspaper databases, an article from uh, an 1893 uh, issue of an Ellicottville newspaper. And I've, I've got it here, right, because I, I wanted to read the thing just to make sure I had it correct, because this kind of really doubled our resolve to, to actually do something with the flag. So the story says, the hearts of the veterans of the 37th Regiment, New York Volunteers, were made glad Tuesday evening at Salamanca by the sight for the first time after a lapse of 30 years of their old regimental flag, which up to a short time ago they had supposed was forever lost. The flag was presented to the Veterans Association of Cattaraugus County by the Reverend W.S. Hubble of Buffalo who secured the flag at the taking of Richmond and has since had it in his possession. The flag was a beautiful silk one which was presented to the regiment by the ladies of New York City and was carried in many of the severest battles of the war. At the Battle of Chancellorsville, the flag was captured by the rebels and was not re recaptured until the fall of Richmond when it was found by Captain Hubble in the rebel Senate chamber over the chair of Vice President Alexander H. Stevens. In presenting the flag to the Cattaraugus County Veterans Association of the 37th Regiment of New York Volunteers, Mr. Hubble gave a brief history of the flag, 
and in many interesting reminiscences in connection with its capture. I mean, what a great story. I mean, here's a flag that was at several of, of the, the biggest battles of the early part of the war, captured at Chancellorsville, then hung over the desk of the Confederate uh, Vice President, um, which, you know, we, because we want to believe that this is all true, and, and you know, being a Presbyterian minister, we hope you wouldn't be making, <laughs> fabricating any of this. Uh, but it was just a fantastic story, amazing history. Um, so again, we were, we're, you know, we've got to fix this flag. Um, so over the next two and a half years, students at uh, Buff State, the Garmin Art Conservation Department, the first being um, a young lady who was a senior at the time, her name is Katja Zinsley, and uh, she um, did the a lot of the groundwork as far as um, figuring out the, the treatment plan, what they were going to do, how they were going to attack this, how they were going to you know, get the flag because it was had been rolled so long that it was stiffened up in this shape, how they were going to get it flat again, how they were going to rehydrate the material to get it to lay flat, and then begin the process of cleaning it, which was something that I hadn't even taken into consideration because um, a lot of the paints had salts in them, which over time leached out and create stains in the fabric, the silk around it. And she was able to, 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 to very carefully remove a lot of the stains from it and then piece it back together. Um, she got uh, quite a lot done in her senior year, two semesters of work on it, um, but it wasn't completed. And then in, in 2021, they did not have a textile student, so it kind of sat. And then this past fall, I was contacted that they had a, a new student who wanted to, to take up the reins on the project. Her name was uh, Nat Nien. And um, she managed to complete the reconstruction and oversee the, the mounting and framing and everything um, before it was brought back here uh, to be put on display. Um, so we had an opening back in May, May 20th, and Katya actually came from, she's actually working at the Smithsonian right now, uh, so she came back up and spoke and talked about everything that was involved with, with preserving the flag. Um, but it's, it's, I'm just absolutely thrilled. This is something I've been excited about ever since we discovered that saving it was going to be a possibility. And, um, and I might be rambling here a little bit, but uh, I, I had one of my board members who was skeptical about this because, again, you know, when you see the, the condition of it before, it really was in rough shape. Um, skeptical about whether or not this was even worthwhile you know, it, it can we do anything with this? Well, um, Katja, at the end of her senior year, did a presentation on her progress. And uh, again, COVID, so it was all virtual, Zoom meeting, but she sent me the invitation. And so I watched. Um, meanwhile, I was watching it like on my iPad, and I'm filming it because I didn't know how to download it. I don't know if I could, but so I'm filming it with my phone, watching it on the iPad. Um, but she goes into, she shows the pictures of the flag before and then photos of the different techniques that she used and some of the science behind it and so on. And then towards the end, all of a sudden, she did the reveal of what it looked like now. And I think my jaw dropped open. It was amazing. And so I showed that to my, my board at a board meeting and uh, I completely changed their minds. They were, they were won over completely by this. So, but again, it's, it, it's, it's a great story. Um, the, the flag itself is, is beautiful, um, and um, we're just thrilled to, to have this back where people can see it um, and, and learn about the story. On that field, and, and reading some of the accounts, that was where they had their most severe fighting in their history. Um, they basically spent almost 18 hours fighting back and forth across this clearing called Hazel Grove. Um, and it was after that that they were pretty much wiped out. So likely that's where the flag was captured. And so I took a picture here um, of the spot where they were 
um, on the field. So.